Hey, how's it going? Well, someone named Mintberry Crunch. <laughs> Mintberry Crunch is fun to eat. A smurfy, fruity breakfast treat. He left a link to a video by Camille Pallia. It was a, a, a seven-minute excerpt, or several excerpts, from a, about an hour and a half long speech that she made. You know, it really got me thinking. I, I mean, there are some things that she said that I disagreed with. I mean, I understand the the social and political environment that a lot of people are surrounded by right now. Uh, there is, unfortunately, a lot of demonization of men and demonization of masculinity in general. Um, for some, it's not just about the toxic masculinity. It's For some, it's just about masculinity all around and you know i mean i i think it's okay to uh to talk about the toxic uh things that are being taught to kids uh the the type of toxic masculinity that uh men's rights uh, groups originally started to bring up you know i think those things are are important to talk about um you know, all these standards that boys put onto themselves and feel that they have to come to certain standards or they're not, they're not real men or they're not real boys or they're not, you know, and that that's hard on people. But there are many segments within the feminist and social justice community that are really truly shoving forth uh, the demonization of masculinity in general, and it's kind of sickening. And I can see how this would increase the number of men that become so ashamed of being men that they'd rather be women. Um, I can see this. Um, and I'm certainly not going to try to claim uh, who is doing this, who has or who hasn't. I, I have no right to declare that. I can't read someone's mind. But I certainly think that, given the circumstances, it would be, uh, for some people, it would be a rational decision to just not be a man anymore, you know. And I can see how this could have a very negative effect on our society. I'm hoping that it doesn't end up becoming so destructive that we watch the downfall of our society. I think there's a lot more things that would have to come into place in addition to that for there to be a downfall of our society. And you know, we might be on those uh, building blocks of the destruction of our society. I certainly know that capitalism is on its way out. It will probably be about 10 years or so before we really start to see the the effects of of uh, automation, um, the really really negative effects of automation. Because at first, automation is going to seem awesome. You know, all the the drones that will deliver things and uh, semis that are self driving. And I mean, with semis, they could have cameras all the way around around it, and it would actually be far safer than when hu than when humans uh, drive those things. Um, but yeah, I mean, at first it's going to seem really neat, but then we're going to see the negative effects because capitalism cannot survive when the middle class gets too small. It's just, it's just not going to work. Um, and that's something that I think will kill capitalism. It just, and right now we do have so many standards, social standards that are just, they're incomprehensible anymore. People don't know what to do, what to act like, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. People are just kind of losing touch of that. Some people will just rely on the laws to tell them, you know, what's right or wrong. Because things have become so confusing to try to look at it in other ways. Bearing seems to be one of the people that looks to the laws to define what is right and wrong. Um, I think that's kind of scary. Um, but things have become very confusing in recent years. So, now, I mean, once capitalism falls, 
which it most certainly will at some point in the future, when globalism pretty much replaces things, then things may be something where we end up looking just to the laws for morality. Because if if we have a globalist type of system, there's going to be, I mean, in true multiculturalism, when capitalism fails, will that mark the end of the way we currently look at our civilization? Hard to say. There are a number of things that could, uh, ways that we could describe the end of civilizations. So if that's the case, then yeah, we are probably on the cusp of our, uh, this civilization dying because there just, there are just so many factors. I'm certainly not going to put the blame on, uh, people who want to promote social justice, but she does bring up a lot of good points. And so anyway, you know, I, I watched that the, that seven minute set of excerpts from the longer speech and said, "I want us. I want to watch more of this," and so I did. And she blew my mind. Again, I don't agree with a number of things she says, but she really got me thinking. And and one of the reasons why I am considering her stuff so much more is because she doesn't come off as a right-wing blowhard that sounds like she's about to say something that uh, Eagle Eye 1975 would say. Um, you know, I'm not really a fan of the... Uh, I mean, I am very biased against uh, the right-wing view of what the role of government should be. I'm just not a fan of that. To me, the right-wing viewpoint of the role of government, as well as most libertarian viewpoints, and no, not all, there are some very leftist libertarian viewpoints that are not this way, but that uh, everything should be about survival of the fittest. And I guess I could call that social Darwinism, but then people will get on my case. Well, technically that's not, okay, so I'll just try to leave it generic and say that it is this mindset of survival of the fittest. You know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of thing, no matter what you're going through, that, that people shouldn't, uh, they shouldn't really be able to get help from the government with just about anything, unless you're a business and then you can get help that way or something, right? Well, the libertarian side of things kind of takes away from that too, but the, uh, uh, the Republican side of things, you know, is all about they're they're they don't have a problem with uh, the government helping businesses, even large corporations and corporate welfare and all that shit. Oh, that that's okay, you know. And some people, some, I don't know, I won't even try to guess the percentage of people who will shove forth that, you know, oh, corporate personhood. Oh, geez, <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I think that's bullshit. But um. And there's just so many people that will talk about the subject of, of you know, they will critique feminism and, and, and social justice. They come off as, as, as a bunch of right-wing blowhards because most of the time they're just pretty much almost verbatim repeating right-wing talking points just over and over again. And me, oh, let me let me say this right 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 wing talking point right wing talking point right wing talking point. What do you mean? I sound like a conservative. I'm a liberal. Right wing talking point. Right wing talking point. Right wing talking point. And it becomes very frustrating. So many people that do critique uh, feminism and social justice, as in in the way that social justice is being uh, talked about at colleges. Um. It's like you want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like there is nothing good that can come out of of feminism. That there's nothing good that can come out of social justice. And Camille, she she takes a, a different tilt on it. She really does, and I I appreciate that. Again, I don't agree with a number of things that Camille says, but. I really, really appreciate the fresh perspective. And so I highly recommend her video. I mean, there are people like Christina Hoff Summers who have, uh, 
who have talked about some of this stuff, but Christina comes off as a, a sometimes she comes off as a right wing blowhard. You know, you you could easily well she's been on on PJ Media and Breitbart and a number of other right wing uh, places. Now, PJ Media has talked about Camille before. But I, I, her approach is different. When something throws a huge wrench in my narrative, puts a huge hole in my narrative, you know, I, I've got to, I've got to give someone credit for that. You know, it's really getting me to think. So, um, please check out the video that I'll be linking in the description bar, and uh, I will eventually make, hopefully anyway, some responses to some of the things that uh, that she says. Um, but right now, I just want to point out uh, this speech that she made. So... <laughs> 